This is a Hot Pie Media original. Well, you know, first of all, he screwed the show over. Uh, we had a plan. We had a script. We had everything set up, I thought. We could do everything shirtless if we wanted. We could do whatever. We're happy to promote Sing 2. And then Wooderson went ahead and didn't make an announcement on this show as planned. That's not how it was supposed to work. It was supposed to work where one way or another, Matthew McConaughey was going to be on this show and shirtless and then make an announcement about being governor. Didn't do that, but did do it on Sunday night. Now, I think I'm going to be guilty. Um, I don't mind being called out on this. I might be guilty of this all day long, and that is taking everything far too seriously or maybe trying to take things far too seriously. But I'm going to admit now, I think there's a lot more to this. And I think I can make an argument a little bit longer term, not that far in the future, that the guy's paving the way for something that even if you laugh him off now, I think could potentially be kind of a big deal. And I did say paving the way. So there are two, there's two ways you can go with Matthew McConaughey, Wooderson, for those that don't know, and I think you should know. Um, there's two ways you can go with this Wooderson announcement. By the way, he has spent the better part of, what, six, eight months at least, not saying why he won't say he's not running. I know it's twisted, but that's the way to look at it. From the very beginning, I said, has anyone noticed how he goes out of his way to not say he's running for governor? Now there's something else to read into this, and I think there's a lot to read into it. But you can do a couple of things. One of them is you can easily laugh at it. You can laugh at him. You can laugh at the fact that why this, why now? You can go this route and say, oh, come on, Ward, you idiot. It's a publicity stunt. You can do that. And I, and I, could, I think you make pretty good arguments that it's all a publicity stunt. You could. And I mean, you can make the argument. I don't believe you, and I don't believe that it is, actually. But you can make the argument. You got Sing 2 coming out. For those who don't know Sing, it's really good. The first one was good. Not, it's not Toy Story. We're never going to have another Toy Story series. But Sing 1 was pretty funny, and he was the star, the main voice of Sing. And it... It was great. It was well done. It's an animated show. It's a funny show. He plays a koala, and it just it's funny. If you don't have kids, too bad. You could say, come on, Ward. I mean, this is all a setup. This is all the studio hype. This is all, you know, this is all about him. This is all about um, publicity and marketing. And you, you guys, you morons falling for this stuff, you could take that route. You can easily say, I told you so. You, you doofus, you took this seriously. You actually tried to debate this stuff. Uh, yeah, we knew all along he wasn't going to do this. You could do that. And then you can back yourself up with all the Hollywood uh, criticism you want. You can back it up with all the publicity arguments you want. I mean, you can. I, I get it. And I'm willing to accept that that may be it. It just, you know what stuck out for me? The flags. The flags. The flags. I'm actually taking his I'm not running now pretty seriously. Let me ask you a question. Here's a guy who was on polling numbers alone in his kumbaya pitch. Let's don't let's don't forget it was nothing but kumbaya from day one. It was McConaughey acting like McConaughey. It was this folksy. I'm going to be the modern version of Mark Twain thing from the very beginning. And he's pretty good at it. I don't think it was an accident. I don't. And I don't think that announcement was an accident. And I really don't think it's an accident if he doesn't support anybody. I think there's a lot to read into this in the very near future. I think the fact that there are two flags next to him, there's a lot to that too. There's something about this announcement that to me isn't just, I'm goofing around, back off, it's a publicity stunt. It didn't come off that way as all, at all to me. And I may be guilty of reading far too much into it. I may be guilty of thinking too seriously about all this. But you can if you want. And I'm, I'm going to go with you. And I'll, t I'll take you down that path. You can argue 
this guy's running. Not today, not this next go around. This guy is laying the groundwork for him. Not just him. And I'll be guilty of this too. He might just be the person that blows open a three-party race. And that's pretty significant. What is he? I don't know. Uh, will it work? No, it won't work. And I'll tell you why politics, politics is not about good ideas. Politics is about hate. Politics is not about, I say many times, and I'm more right than ever before, you don't vote in favor of something. You vote against someone. So it's not going to work, but it's going to be pretty compelling along the way, I think. And I think he might just be the one. We've always said, not all of us, you know, there's political hacks, there's extremists. We live in an extreme world. There are extremists here, extremists here, and then everybody else is saying, screw it, I'm going to move on. There's no third party. He might be the third party. He might be popular enough, folksy enough. He might be the better version of Texas's Jesse Ventura. I know, Ward, you're crazy. I might be. Jesse Ventura, for those that we laughed, we laugh it off because he became a doofus and a joke. But Jesse Ventura was this charismatic, cut through the clutter, guy created a third party run when nobody saw it coming. I'm just saying that in a world of an R and a D and you, and you sort of monopolize these ends of the spectrum, everybody keeps waiting on a third and fourth party and somebody to matter. It's going to take somebody charismatic and somebody who can sell to be a third party. That's the guy. That's what I think this is. And I think it's actually coming pretty soon. I don't think it's about next year or MAGA hats, or Beto Part 10, or whatever. I think it's about a little bit longer term. And I think there's something important to it. And that is the ability. Maybe he is the one that paves the way that says, for those of you that are not here or here, here's a place for you. I think this whole thing is strategic. I don't think he's doing it just by himself. And I think there's some real significance to him saying, not now. I'm reading a lot into it, and I'm actually making it a bigger issue than just him. I know people are stuck on the celebrity of him, but I'm trying to make an argument that someday, somehow, somebody's going to do the math, and I believe somebody around him has done the math, and they say, what's up with this? You got 25 here and 25 here, and they don't really care about much stuff. They just hate on each other. So what about everybody else? Why can't somebody just take that other big chunk of people? The math is just sort of standing there waiting. The problem is no one can take that giant pool of voters unless you cut to the clutter. We live in an extreme world of nothing but hate. You do not get elected on ideas. Joe Biden is going to prove it again. Joe Biden got elected because of hate, and he's going to be dumped because of hate. It's nothing about ideas. Nothing. But... It is about charisma, and that guy could take a big pool. All right, I've screwed it up for you already. Taking it way too seriously, Ward. Maybe. John McClellan is the co-founder and creator of ATX Hot Sauce, now in all 50 states and several retail outlets as well. So what we're going to do today is we're going to let this social media rock star chef uh, walk us through Four different sauces, and then I'll taste, and we'll tell everyone why they should buy. You can give the science behind yeah. these, and then I'll make the uh, the simple recommendation. Go to atxhotsauce.com. All right, so let's go. I don't so think anybody's go. heard the website yeah, I know, I know. you, Jeff, <laughs> but never that, yeah, that. it is atxhotsauce.com. I'll say 345 right. times, atxhotsauce.com. So let's do it. Uh, I brought four flavors here, and we're going to test your palate today. Okay. And I only brought four because I didn't think you could handle five yeah, or six. Yes, Probably a smart move. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so the first one we're going to try here, it's called Beet Heat. And just like the name implies, beet. It, beet, it has beets in it. It's made with red Fresno peppers. Red Fresnos are uh, red peppers that are uh, they're hotter than a jalapeno and a little bit less than a serrano. So not super hot here. Uh, just a lot of good, really good flavor. So we're going to start All with right. this one, and then we're going to move up the chain. Okay. I've had the beet heat, but okay. Yeah, we're going to try it, though. We're it, goes try it, well, it goes well with a cab. All right, Jeff's savoring beet. I'll heat. even do it with you, so that should be all right. 
Now remember, it is hot sauce. Yeah. Oh, it is. <laughs> it's hot sauce. Trust me, man. Wait, it's that hot sauce. Is that one hot to you? Um, no, no, no. A little. Yeah. The, the, no. the great thing with the fermentation process is you get a bunch of the flavor right up front. Yeah. And then the heat comes, but then it dissipates pretty quickly, especially with the red Fresnos. You know, this is not a very spicy uh, one, but it is um, a very tasty one. Goes on great on sandwiches. Beet heat. Beet heat. B E E T heat. All right. Go to atxhotsauce.com. That's right. Well, he didn't do it on the show. That sucks. Uh, it's a deal breaker. Can't believe you screwed us over, man. What was this all about, everyone? What was that thing all about? What was this? Remember, the, was it Russell Brand dressed like Jesus that time? They did that podcast together. And it was nonsensical, just blabbing away. I don't even know if it makes sense now. Was this six months of, I'm not going to say I'm not running? What was that about? Um, it didn't make a whole lot of sense, did it? I think it does now. So Wooderson has now given Beto O'Rourke the gift of going from 5%, 5% chance of winning. I may give him 10. I'll say 10. Wooderson just went from giving Beto O'Rourke a 10% chance of winning to be the next governor of Texas to a 25% chance of winning and becoming the next governor of Texas. No, 40% chance of becoming the next governor of Texas. Wooderson getting out for now gives Beto a 40% chance of becoming the next governor of Texas. No, 25. Sorry, I'm going backwards. It's 45 if Donald Trump runs. Hear me out, okay? Hear me out, because nobody votes in favor of something. Remember, I do not believe you vote for issues. You do not do it. Nobody does it. It's not going to happen. Hear me out. Wooderson gets out. Let's just take a look at Beto O'Rourke, who he, I don't know that they talk to each other. I know he's got to be begging for Wooderson to endorse him. I think there's a ton to read into the fact that Wooderson will not endorse him. I think there's a lot to read into that. But Wooderson getting out saves Beto O'Rourke. Wooderson's out. This is my calculation here. It gives Beto O'Rourke a 25% chance of being the next governor of Texas. If Donald Trump announces he's running, I'm going to argue that gives Beto O'Rourke a 45% chance of becoming the next governor of Texas. Call me crazy. You know why it increases his odds by 20%? Because he gets to make it about Donald Trump. That's why. He's not going to get elected even about saying Greg Abbott is a tool and you're all going to freeze to death again. It won't matter. Hating on Donald Trump will matter. Here's Wooderson last night. There are, two, there are two flags. It looked a lot like every other politician we've ever known. It cannot be an accident that there is a Texas flag and an American flag right next to him like every political ad you've ever seen. It is a staged there's more to this. This isn't about last night, I'm out. This is about, I don't know when, two years from now, year and a half from now, this is about that. Hey everybody, McConaughey here. Listen, over the past two years, I've been working on the answer to the question of how I can be most useful in this life going forward. Useful to myself, useful to my family, and to the most amount of people. One category of service I've been exploring is politics. I've been considering a run for the governor of Texas. I've been listening, I've been learning, been measuring, been studying Texas politics and American politics. What have I learned? A lot. That we have some problems we need to fix. That our politics needs new purpose. That we have divides that need healing. That we need more trust in our lives. So we got to start shining a light on our shared values, the ones that cross party lines, the ones that build bridges instead of burn them. That our children 
are our greatest asset. So, hey, let's be as good parents as we can be. I've learned that freedom comes with responsibility and that great leaders serve. Whether a politician, a CEO, star quarterback, a mother, father, husband, wife, brother, friend, mentor, or teacher, we lead by serving each other. We lead through our service. What is service? Service is taking on responsibility today so we can have more freedom tomorrow. Service is making the better choice for you and for me. Service is the investment we make in ourselves. So, can we recognize that when we serve others, we actually serve ourselves and vice versa? Do we have the courage to help out more than we hurt? Can we expect to get what we earn more than what we think we deserve? Can we give ourselves more reasons to trust each other first instead of last? That's the leadership that we need. That's the investment in our states and our country that we need. That's the investment we need. As a simple kid born in the little town of Uvalde, Texas, it never occurred to me that I would one day be considered for political leadership. It's a humbling and inspiring path to ponder. It is also a path that I'm choosing not to take at this moment. What am I gonna do? I'm going to continue to work and invest the bounty I have by supporting entrepreneurs, businesses, and foundations that I believe are leaders, establishments that I believe are creating pathways for people to succeed in life, organizations that have a mission to serve and build trust while also generating prosperity. That's the American dream. And politicians, well, the good ones can help us get to where we need to go, yeah. But let's be clear, they can't do anything for us unless we choose to do for ourselves. So to the leaders and the servants out there and the leader and servant in each one of us, cheers to you. Here's to the freedom to be you, the freedom to be me, and to our responsibility to be us. In the meantime, and all times, and until next time, just keep living. Okay, of course it's good. Well, he's a pro. I <laughs> mean, it better be good. That wasn't an accident, I don't think. You can laugh it off again. I told, I've already given you the path, the open door to say, what are you talking about, man? The guy's – it's another publicity stunt. I don't believe it was. I believe all this is very calculated, and I don't believe it's by – I believe I know what the voice – where that voice is coming from. I know. I think I, I think I know who's writing that stuff. And they're far smarter than everybody in politics. And it's a good speech. It's a great line. I'd trot it out. If, I would never run for office because that means you are on crack or you're rabid. Um, but politicians can't do anything for you. Right. Um, I think that's a campaign speech. I think that is a let me pave the way. Let me put some flags up. I think it is also the reality that he wouldn't win now and he'd be chewed up and he would learn the harsh reality that people don't vote or in favor of something. They vote against someone. Politics is only hate. Voters are only hate. All that matters is I need to hate someone. That's it. I think he found that out. I think he realized he wouldn't win. I think he'd get chewed up in the process. And I think he and someone near him learned you got to work a long time to pave this big path to get that giant swath of people who aren't extremists to, one, pay attention, and two, have it matter enough to vote. And I think therein lies the giant problem. It's nice to say nice speech. It's nice to say I'm not an extremist. That's not what gets people to vote. I think the reality of that set in, and he's now got a lot of work ahead of selling this, I'm Mark Twain, Let's just be pals. Let's just do kumbaya. I think there's a lot of groundwork that has to be set. And it'll be fascinating to watch him try because I think this is the start of him trying. I think I'm backed up by the fact that he's not going to endorse either candidate. If he does, then he's then, then I'm completely wrong. If he doesn't, there's a lot to read into it. For now, Greg Abbott is furious not furious, he's frustrated because this was his path to campaigning for one job and keeping another. Beto O'Rourke, this was a life preserver. 
I mean, otherwise you you lose and you lose in a bad way if Wooderson stays in. Wooderson's out, you got a chance. Wooderson's out and Trump decides to run, you've got a real chance. Your chances improve dramatically. No Trump, little chance. Crazy Trump, pretty good chance.